I think once people give up hope in, in when they're so sick, to survive sometimes is, is much less possible. And this gave people hope to keep on fighting. I think it made a massive difference for both families and patients. I remember we got our first patient and then three or four days later we had four and then the next week we were ambushed. At the peak we would easily see 10 or 12 deaths a day um, which killed all of us, killed all of us. <laughs> I got this like, thought, what are we going to do when the doctors get sick? We were only, well, at the time, six consultants doing the intensive care work. And if two or three of us are, were off, it, the system would have collapsed. So I thought there must be a way that we can do your ward round remotely and at least give you advice. And, and this is where Quinton fitted in. And so initially he was meant to, to be a, a medical personality, but he actually uh, morphed into a far more important role, which was into a emotional supportive role. Remember the mental health of the patients was extremely terrible because they would be in a room and watch other people dying. So uh, with no support and because they were isolated, um, completely cut off from even us generally. Because of the numbers of patients and because of the level of fatigue, we were not able to adequately meet the emotional needs of our patients or their relatives. We realised one of the big things causing distress for staff was the fact that patients were not able to see their families because of no visitation policies. And they're really busy running around, they can't necessarily sit with a tablet and do a phone call, there's just no time for that. Very soon we realised that we could use him to be the, uh, that interface between the patients and their families. Hello. The video calls were helping. The video calls when, even though my husband, he can't talk for long, he will struggle to breathe, but at least I could see him and I could talk to him. He, um... He was really ill, but also always wanted to see his wife. He wasn't always able to speak to her. I love you, baby. His love for his wife was so palpable. I thought he was getting better. And then um, Dr. Patrick phoned me to say your husband's heart is not functioning properly. Uh, he is in his last moments. And I think the important thing was then to, for people to actually have these video calls and see their relatives and that they can see their mother um, perhaps for the last time and at least they have some virtual experience. It's very difficult, they leave home not that sick and now you're telling them they're lying on a ventilator and it's close to dying. I think it just, it, I hope it gave some people closure. So they did a video call, my children came and we spoke to him, telling him that uh, he mustn't leave us and we were praying for him and asking God to save him. I sat with him on that video call until past one. You know, and he pulled through and that was amazing. Um, do you know, you never know what is what, but I, I do believe that strengthening that connection to family plays a role in people's recovery. So, and the doctors were saying, wow, we are so impressed, we, we didn't think he's going to make it, you know. He played a very important role. And I know in the critical moment, that's right. Um, but, but he was someone who made it and he walked out of here, I think it was 45 days that he was in ICU. Quentin allowed us to dream. Quentin and they to the idea, why don't we do it um, on a much greater scale? So what you probably have heard about is that we're in the process of trying to, trying to digitize the, the ICU as a whole. To, to make it more accessible remotely and to get advice from specialists elsewhere in the world.
consultants are able to, to dial in and actually see what's going on, you can increase your scope and your reach. Ultimately, it's obviously to improve the care of the patients. And hopefully this is going to stay long after COVID. I take off my head like that and may God bless them.